Hi, I'm Father Joseph Mary, and welcome back to A Simple Word, where we reflect on the gospel for the coming Sunday. There was once a world-class female runner who was invited to compete in a race in Connecticut. On the morning of the race, she drove from New York City, following the direction she'd been given, and so she thought. But she got very lost, so she stopped at a gas station for directions. All she knew was that the race started in the parking lot of a shopping mall. The gas station attendant knew of such a race scheduled just up the road, and he gave her clear directions. She was greatly relieved upon arriving to see only a few runners stretching in the parking lot. This competition would be easier than she thought. Although the officials had no record of her entry, they quickly assigned her a number, and the race began. Naturally, she won quite easily, some four minutes ahead of the first male runner in second place. But it was only after the race, when there was no envelope containing her prize money, that she'd realized she'd gone to the wrong parking lot. She'd ended up at the wrong starting line, and she'd run the wrong race. This Sunday, Matthew's Gospel presents us with yet another parable of Jesus. And with the exception of the parable of the wicked steward, no other parable's meaning is so often debated. And we'll see why. Jesus begins by saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. In Jewish culture, dawn meant 6 a.m. The hours in this parable correspond to the Jewish sense of time. The day began at sunrise, usually around 6. So the third hour would be 9 a.m., the sixth hour noon, and so on. The typical Jewish workday ended with the sunset, the twelfth hour, around 6 p.m. So around 6 a.m., a landowner goes out to hire laborers for his vineyard. He finds some men willing to work, and he agrees with them on the usual daily wage, which, as we learned last week, was a denarius, the chief silver coin of the Romans, and the equivalent pay of a Roman soldier. So the landowner then sends the men to work in his vineyard. But apparently there was a lot of work needed in this vineyard because by 9 a.m. the landowner's back looking for more workers. In fact, he returns at noon and at 3 p.m. as well, always looking for more workers. What's going on in his vineyard? The work in the vineyard consisted of reaping the grape harvest. The grapes ripened toward the end of September, but the heavy rains followed quickly thereafter. So if the harvest wasn't gathered quickly, the heavy rains would destroy the fruits. Every year, the grape harvest was a hectic race against time. So the landowner needed as many hands as he could possibly find. And he went looking for these in the marketplace. It was here that the day laborers gathered before sunrise, carrying their tools and hoping desperately that someone would hire them. Finally, the landowner returns to the marketplace for the last time, around 5 p.m. There's only an hour of work left in the day, but he's still looking for laborers to toil in the vineyard. And what kind of laborers are these? They show up looking for work at 5 p.m. And where were they all day? But the reaction of the landowner is the same. You too go into my vineyard. Now we come to the crux of the problem. Less than an hour later, around 6 p.m., the landowner tells his foreman, go and fetch the day laborers so that I can pay them and begin with the ones who went in last. So the men who worked probably less than an hour showed up and the landowner pays them each the daily wage. They received a denarius, the full day's wage for a laborer. And yet they worked for maybe an hour. And the landowner gives this same daily wage to each successive group of laborers. Until finally, the first group arrives, the group that had showed up at the marketplace before dawn, the men who had toiled in the summer sun for 12 long hours. And what do they get? The exact same payment. So of course, they begin to grumble. And so would you and I. I say, wait a minute, that last group worked for only an hour and you paid them the same amount you're paying us? We, we worked all day. But the landowner replies, my friend, I'm not cheating you. 
This is what we agreed on. Aren't I free to do as I like with my own money? Are you envious because I'm generous? But that last question is more accurately translated, is your eye evil because I am good? It was a Greek idiom. In ophthalmos poneros, or evil eye implied a deeper problem. The evil eye was the opposite of generosity, greed and jealousy. Finally, Jesus ends the parable by saying, thus the last shall be first and the first shall be last. But again, I don't know about you, but this doesn't sit so well with me. I mean, from our contemporary viewpoint, this parable seems filled with injustices. It brings to mind current issues of immigration and day laborers, a just minimum wage, equal pay for equal work. The whole situation seems completely unfair. I mean, this parable could be used as a justification for exploiting the working class. That's because the parable is really not about field hands or grape vineyards or a wage at all. It's a parable that's pointing to a much more vital reality. The reward is the kingdom of God. In order to understand what's going on here, we have to look at where Matthew places this parable. Again, context is crucial. In the preceding story, Peter claims, we've left everything and followed you. What reward will we have? And immediately following the parable, Jesus tells his disciples that he will be arrested and put to death. And right after this prediction, the mother of James and John approaches Jesus looking for special rewards for her sons to sit on the right and on the left. It's within this context, this frustrating obsession with earthly glory and worldly rewards that Jesus tells the parable. He's talking about his own suffering and death, and all they can think about are secular renown and seats of honor. But the reward is so much greater. In his book, The Weight of Glory, C.S. Lewis wrote, if we consider the staggering nature of the rewards promised in the Gospels, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We're half-hearted creatures, like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he can't imagine what is meant by the offer of a, a vacation by the sea. We're far too easily pleased. Jesus is telling his disciples and us, it's not going to be a worldly reward. Stop running after empty treasures. Run the right race. Toil in my vineyard and I will give you a prize beyond the imagination of men. And if you should turn to me in the dawn of your youth or only come to find me in the dusk of old age, your reward will be the same, the kingdom of God, eternal life. And if you come to know and serve me from youth, don't dare judge or begrudge those who find me only late. I want them too in my vineyard. I want to give them the same reward. If you are truly to be my disciples, you should want that for them too. As we listen to this Sunday's gospel, we have to ask ourselves some crucial questions. How do we welcome the sinner and the latecomer? Are we running the right race in our lives? Are we toiling in the right vineyard? Are we spending our lives on what really matters? Or are we like little children sitting in the slums and stingily playing with our mud pies? I'm Father Joseph Mary, and thanks for listening to A Simple Word. If you found this reflection helpful, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.